Today we're going to be getting into the shorter time frames, the 30 minutes, the two hours, and maybe a few dailies. But for now, the SPY, if you want to get the macro side of things, we did that over the weekend. So click on the previous video. It is very, very good to keep the macro in mind going into a week like this because we have a lot of divergences. We have daily divergences. We have weekly divergences. We have monthly divergences. So I think that we are approaching a major top. And that is something that we've been talking about. But those signals need to prove before we can say that even on the shorter time frames. As of right now, we are paying attention to some stock market analysis. We're doing some technical analysis for the spy cues, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, Nvidia, AMD, and Meta going forward, looking at AMC and GME as well. It's a big, big deal because at the end of the day, we saw some funky behavior from AMC and GME. And real quick, just to say about Roaring Kitty's live stream, a lot of people were disappointed with it. I personally wasn't. You saw me the whole time. I was just kind of like, yeah, this is what I expected. Everyone expects him to execute the con He's not going to do anything that can get him into trouble. What you need to know is it was a very good thing. He proved he has the position. He proved um, that he was holding the position still, and he actually proved market manipulation in real time, and that is a big, big deal. So let's get into this analysis. Starting off with the SPY, I'm just going to mention there is daily divergence here. If you want the rest of the macro side of things, there is daily divergence here, and it is starting to turn down on the RSI. If this crosses over, that's not going to be good news for the SPY. We talked about this on Saturday. Um, if you want that, you can go look at the previous video. We're just looking here right away. Before we get into anything, I just wanted to point out to you guys the difference between the SPY and XLU. XLU is our crash indication. If you need to hear more about that, tune in live. You can ask about it. I'll talk about it a little bit, but that is how we caught this rigged move right there. And what are we noticing here with this rigged move compared to XLU as of right now? The SPY is hitting new all time highs and XLU is going lower. And I want you to pay attention to the range for XLU for this week. It is not. Um, it's not up here or anything like that. It's going to take a lot of work for this to go back. Now, if this does curl up and go positive, we can read into that. But I think we're going to see something on the 30 minute here. I think we're going to see something very similar to over here, which is we're in negative territory. We're pretty deep. So I think we maybe curl up to that center line and curl back down throughout the week. Okay, now that is something that I think is going to happen. I need to see that actually proven in my charts. Follow the charts. That is what we are teaching on this channel. We are teaching you how to follow the charts. When I tell you this is a bullish or bearish signal, it's not saying, hey, go throw everything at it. It's saying, this is what the charts are telling me right now. And this is where you need to pay attention because this is a lot of the time where we see some kind of bounce in the market. Now, if we're going to catch up to this with the SPY, this could just keep crashing. So pay attention. We are going to be watching this live a lot. Let's get back over to the SPY and get you guys some ranges here. Let's get some ranges. So as we look into it, we're going to go to the 30 minute, then the two hour again. What I wanted to point out here was the weekly ranges. We do have to the upside 542.61 to the upside sitting right by the monthly upside expense expected move for the options market and we have 525.41 to the downside and on the daily side of things we do have 536.20 to the upside and 531.82 to the downside not the biggest range for tomorrow so don't expect anything to go wild if we do get outside of this you can see something crazy happen but we still have a weekly range below us I just want you to notice the 30 minute is in positive territory first. I just want you to notice if that curls up at any time and we get kind of a dud day and that curls back up, you are in positive territory and that bullishness can continue. Now, there's always a way up and there's always a way down. And this is the way up is if it's able to hold up and curl up in positive territory for the 30 minute, that's your earliest signal that you're going to see more upside. But if we're able to break down, that would make sense. If we're able to go negative here, that would make sense. Why? Because we do have this divergence. We have a rejection divergence as of right now this is why i was very worried at the end of the day on friday you saw me live i was very worried about the market that they were just going to rug pull it and we could be seeing a rug pull come monday because the dollar was going higher while the spy was going higher and that is exactly what we've said in our videos over and over it is a signal that we pay attention to it means there is insider selling in a lot it was a massive move so a lot of insiders selling while the spy hits new all-time highs you need to pay attention to that that usually means insider selling. So we want to pay attention to 30 minute divergences because they like to roll over two hour charts. Now they'd like to roll over two hour charts. That doesn't mean it has to roll over two hour charts. That doesn't mean this has to absolutely just crash right now. Now if the AMC and GME thing starts to happen, that actually could come to fruition. Sorry, I'm talking a lot. Okay. 
The two hour crossing over though, what would happen here? Well, that would confirm a big, big divergence. We've been waiting for this signal. We waited all week for the signal. It never happened. It never happened. And that is very key to understand that that means your momentum indicator is saying this is not the moment yet. Be patient, be patient, be patient. So we want to pay attention to if this does cross and we see something dramatic early on in the week, what if that is able to bounce back with that weekly expected move? So that would bring this MACD down to the center line and you can curl it back into positive territory. We are just four formulating these scenarios so we can pay attention to the MACD and see if one of these scenarios plays out in front of us and react accordingly. That is important. That is an important thing to learn. Reacting is much better than trying to predict. A lot of people figured that out with GME and AMC uh, on Friday if they went zero DTE. And I would encourage you to just pay attention to your signals, start to trust your signals a little bit more. It would make sense to get a full breakdown here, but we know this market is very, very rigged. So I would pay attention to this weekly expected move. Why? These are not just made up levels. Okay. These are not just made up levels by me that I put on the chart to look cute. They are what the options data gives me to create the calculation that says there is a 68% chance that we land in this zone by the end of the week. So if there's a 68% chance that we end in this zone by the end of the week and we do something like this, well, that means I have a 68% chance to bounce up by Friday close. So pay attention to this. If this curls up into positive territory, what does it mean? It means that we have a positive trend continuing and we could go make an even higher high for the SPY. Cues on the macro side, we talked about how the cues actually look even weaker on the weekly scale. So we're paying attention. We are paying attention to that. And as of right now, what do we see? Well, we see a divergence that looks like it wants to confirm. So we need to pay attention to a few levels here. And the levels that we need to pay attention to, first of all, the weekly expected move for the upside, that is 473 on the dot. And then we do have 452.92 to the downside. So these are going to be the levels to pay attention to. This is what the options market has priced in for us. And they are very, very good. And we have new ranges for AMC and GME. So we are going to give that upside range, um, not the downside. So if you want those, those are over on Patreon. That's the link in the description where I give some trade setups. I give a video that is not on YouTube that breaks down a lot of the stocks throughout the week. If they're making any kind of trade setup, we talk about them in a video format. It's very helpful. Um, people are utilizing that. And I love to see it. But why could this 30 minute curl over and maybe even go down to the daily expected move of 460.18? And then maybe we need to pay attention to if we roll up and go to 465.74. Why could this really roll over the 30 minute rejection divergence here? You have a rejection divergence as of right now. If that starts to go negative, watch out for the bottom side daily expected move. Okay. That's the first thing we have to watch out for. If we start to see something more dramatic, then we want to pay attention to the weekly because it's happening very early on in the week. So even if you if this happens early on in the day, it can scoot back up and look where it is. It's right by the center line. It can curl back up. Positive territory is there. Positive territory means positive trend. We could go make a new high. We could test the old one. Okay. That's what we need to pay attention to here for the 30 minute. As of right now, though, you're seeing that divergence, which likes to push things into a negative trend. That's why we pay attention to it. So then we can pay attention to that weekly expected move 452.92 to the downside. So we still want to pay attention to the similar thing on the queues if this rule over and rolls back up positive territory is there we can go test test this high go make a new one pay attention to any time that rolls over because then you have a divergence in the short price action here and a divergence across the way it screams a lot of weakness this is kind of what i'm talking about with the cues it screams a lot of weakness look at this all these divergences across the way this is very rigged behavior you're seeing a lot of fake outs you have to be very quick with it and manage that risk that is what we teach you in the course how to manage your risk how to get in and out of trades how to know when you are getting screwed is a hundred dollars right now for the rest of june uh, you guys know ever since i called these rigged moves in the market Right. I think it was right around this point right here where I said this move is rigged and we're probably going to see some kind of major move up. OK, when that happened, Teachable stopped paying me and they they kind of I don't know if they're doing it on purpose or anything like that. I think it's just a malfunction in their system. The processing isn't working the best, but the PayPal option is working and you can try the credit debit. If that doesn't work, do the PayPal option. But I really want you guys to be able to learn these things. The two hour divergence all the way across the way here. We see it all the way down here on the MACD. And guess what? We see it on the RSI at the same time. It's starting to escalate. It looks like we may be heading for a top. So let's see if there's weakness in this move because I can't really say like, oh, positivity looks great here 
We're, we're in an area where, yeah, if you cross up, you can see positivity, but we're going to be overbought right away. So let's look at a 30 minute, the 30 minute in the nearest price action, you're creating a divergence, but you have not confirmed it. This is why you wait for things to confirm, because look at this downturn right here that maybe faked you out. And then the price just bounced right back up. Now, as of right now, we did give you new updated ranges for Apple going into this week. So pay attention to that on Patreon, but you're noticing a steep, steep divergence here. And when you see something steep there, if that's able to cross over, you're right by negative territory. We can start some kind of negative trend. I'd still be very cautious going into Monday. But if we wanted to, this is still positive. You're not very overbought. You can still head higher. That is important to note. There is still room in this MACD to head higher to create that divergence. There's still room on this RSI to create that divergence. So don't think this just has to drop off right away on Monday, even though insiders are really, really selling here. We can see that difference for a little bit of time. Now, Tesla was the wonky one. This is the one that I said, you know, it's been very choppy and retail loves to trade this. And look, since they know retail loves to trade this, what are they doing? They're ripping you back and forth. They're trapping you back and forth. We got traps to the upside. We have traps to the downside. And now maybe we have another one of those traps. But what if we actually make another move higher and create that divergence? Okay, so that would be kind of my bullish take here is the MACD on the 30 minute curling up into positive territory. I think that's the best case uh, for some positivity. The negative side to that, the bearish side to that would be the two hour ruling over into negative territory. Okay, so 30 minute curling up into positive territory, two hour curling down into negative territory. That's all we have to pay attention to this week to know whether or not Tesla has some weakness. It is slowly on the daily scale creeping down towards the center line on this MACD. So pay attention. This could be a very big moment for Tesla coming in this week. Amazon was the one that, you know, I saw a lot of media telling you bye, 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 bye. And when we pull this out on the bigger scale, it's in a bubble, it looks like. So this is one of the ones that looks like it's in a little bit of a bubble up at these levels. Now it has come down and I would not be shorting this one, right? That's one of my rules in the course that we do not short a stock that has crossed upward on its daily MACD. And that's just because daily momentum can take over. We use that for GME. And that was very, very helpful this week. But you notice the two hour, if we were going to see some kind of dramatic downside, well, it's still pretty close to negative territory. So pay attention to that. What are we seeing in the 30 minute time frame? Well, we do have divergences up there, but look how they look so wonky. So this is one that is in a bubble. This is one they're convincing you to buy right now. I'm not too convinced, but it is positive. Okay. It is positive. So anytime this 30 minute curls up, you can see more positivity for Amazon. And that is something to pay attention to pay attention to how you can get screwed with Amazon. They're really trying to do something funky with it. Nvidia did something huge this week, and this is going to update and I'm going to have to update those ranges for it. I, I can't get a range for it right now. So Patreon, uh, you know, I'm just using the range, the uh, the calculated implied volatility for last week. So this could be a lot different and we could have wrong levels for Nvidia on those weekly ranges because I can't get the implied volatility. If I'm if I end up able to get those, I will change it and update it on Patreon. I'll let you know. I'll make another post so you see it. OK, so what are we noticing here? The two hour divergence is what we we're looking for to complete that actually did complete and then we see this wonky behavior towards the end of the day so this is the rigged behavior we can see remember nvidia is rigged to the upside so we have to pay attention to it Sorry, I got a little hot. I had to change out of that robe. It's a robe of Sunday. All right, so, but we need to pay attention to any time this two hours is able to roll back up. Okay, the MACD is going to look the same when the stock changes of the split. But if that curls up any time into positive territory, that means a positive move is coming. If that rolls negative, then more negativity will come and the daily can confirm that divergence there. So we'll pay attention to that. The 30 minute though, it looks like it's been trying to curl up and there's that wonky behavior towards the end of the day, probably because of GME and AMC. I think that the stream put through them for a loop they don't know how to react to it right now and so they're trying to decide do we do we rip it away from them right now do we do we tear this bubble down right now with nvidia or do we keep it going higher to keep paying for it and that's where i think that Roy and kitty was actually very smart to do that i think he actually um played it pretty perfectly to where they are super confused and at the same time they accidentally shot themselves in the foot by showing they were manipulating the market in real time based on what he was saying based on the start of his stream all those things that is illegal to halt because of a random stream it's just it's illegal so he proved it in real time. And I thought that was very cool. Now, if this 30 minutes able to gain some steam here, well, right now it's red. Okay. So that says still in a pullback. If that's able to flip to green, then you can see positivity in this move. We'll pay attention to this more on Monday live when this does update with the split. And we'll, we'll make sure to update you guys regularly with NVIDIA throughout the live video.
AMD was kind of screaming weakness here and you see all the flatness here of this RSI. You see the weird behavior here from the MACD. If we go into a 15 minute, it looks more clear. It's trying to go negative right now. It's scooping up. So we could see another move higher. But what if that move higher is brief? We do not have a very big range for Monday. So that is something key to understand. And we're going to talk about that live as well when we see the price action going at the open. But right now it looks like what are we creating? A ton of divergences here and it's starting to roll. So I think we have the opportunity here to maybe complete a cup, get a handle and head lower. The reason you don't really want to head lower here is because your two hour is right by negative territory. You have the multiple point divergence in here. We've mentioned it multiple times. These points right here that's divergence and that's divergence and that is screaming to me hey there is some weakness in this overall move so pay attention to amd kind of scary because if the daily rolls over it's very very close to negative territory what does negative territory mean it means that when it crosses the center line you see bad things you cross the center line you see bad things you cross the center line right around here you got a small bounce that's the rigged move and then boom they rug pull it so just pay attention to your signals trust your signals that is in a similar boat here, right? The daily still very close to the center line. So if this rolls over at any time, it could mean dramatic downside for Meta. And if we look at a two hour, we noticed it was able to violate some of those divergences, but you did get a little double top divergence that you're seeing on the RSI right now that can roll over this MACD. The problem with this MACD, it's still up there. So if it wanted to any time of the week curl back up, that means more positivity. Just pay attention to your signals. If it, if it just doesn't cross right now, it's not even crossed right now. So it's not even saying pullback yet. The 30 minute this is where you're going to see that clear clear divergence on the macd and rsi the rejection divergence here if that's able to go negative you're going to roll over that two hour and you will at least see a two hour pullback if not crossing over that daily macd and actually getting something more dramatic so we're still paying attention to the downside for 453.08 and then we have our weekly upside moves to pay attention to in case this 30 minute just rolls up and the craziness continues they can rig this market for as long as they want you are not seeing the real numbers in front of you really it's so rigged that it's kind of to a point where it's like you don't know the actual value of any stock right now now, AMC and GME, we talked about this, okay? We talked about this on Friday. We were talking about this live and people were going zero DTE. And I said, oh, I don't know why you're doing that. This is saying pullback. This is saying downside. This is saying downside. And it never was able to curl back up. And we had a key level to pay attention to. So I'm going to put up the new key level for you to pay attention to for this week because this one was where um, something crazy could have happened. And now we're going to get a new one. So I'm going to give you that right now. Friday. So the level to really pay attention to this week for something crazy to happen is we have to be closing above 633. This is overall what the options market does not expect. And you're probably wondering, why did this line move up? Why did it move up? Well, that is because they are applying more short positions. They are applying more short positions. That is very important to understand. They actually applied a ton of short positions on AMC and GME on Friday because of that roaring kitty stream. He played them perfectly. He made them waste tons of money. And so this overall, all says if this 15 minute crosses up it can cross that but it's down here in negative territory so the better signal is if a 30 minute is able to cross up in positive territory and stay above 633 at the end of the week that is going to cause them a lot a lot of pain that is why we pay attention to these ranges this is very important to understand how they expect at least something like this to happen if it goes to the upside but they would not expect us to get above that so they this is where most likely you will start to see halts or if you get above that you will see the price try to gravitate down towards this area by friday close this is very important to understand that they're applying more and more short positions every single day and that is the battle that you're going through so if you're going to see positivity you're going to see the 30 minute roll up into positive territory now the two hour has crossed over so right now you are in a two hour pullback so if you want that downside range i still like 437 um, but if you want that downside range, it is over on Patreon. You can see that downside range. Maybe we do something like this and create a divergence. That would be a great, great signal to pay attention to. But as of right now, the important thing to understand is daily momentum is still with you. Daily momentum is still with you for some upside. That is very important to understand. It has not crossed over on this MACD. So you're really not wanting that two hour to get that pullback, but that could be brief. And then we get a two hour divergence and then it just rips to the upside. So pay attention to your signals, even though it is a quote unquote meme stock, you can still do the exact same things that we are doing with the other charts. Right now, AMC is in a positive, positive daily trend.
GameStop is in a positive daily trend as well. That means daily momentum is still with you. Even though you're seeing this big red bar, daily momentum is still with you. And that's very important to understand. Now, the level this week you're seeing, it got way bigger, 41.17. Originally, it was 29.03. You notice how? What do they do? By the end of the week, they crush it. So it's below 29.03. They do not want it to close above these ranges. This would be an unexpected thing. Okay, so that's why we're paying attention to it. We're also paying attention to 47.57. That held as a great level for us this week. We created that way back here. So these are two levels that are great to get past. If you're able to hold above that by the end of the week, just know this, they are losing a ton of money and they're trying to suppress the stock. So they're wasting more and more money if the stock remains higher. That is very important to understand. New short positions have been applied to GME at these levels. So you need the price to hold even higher in order to really cause them some more pain these people are already screwed but the people who applied positions in here aren't as screwed so you need this to get above this level of 4117 that's very important to understand as we look at the two hour that is crossing over saying i'm in a pullback but we can see if that curls up at any time that would mean your momentum indicator is telling you that positivity can be there the probability is positivity will be there this is still a rigged stock so you have to pay close attention to it the signal in the shorter time frames is going to be for your for your pops for now. So you still need at least the 30 minute to go positive to see another positive move and get above this 4117 level. If that continues going negative, that's going to be a bad thing. And you might still be in that two hour pullback. So just let your signals tell you what to do. And this is why I said zero DTE on Friday made no sense. It made no sense because your MACD never curled up. But I want you to notice how going into Monday, the 15 minute looks like it wants to curl up. And guess what? What if that goes positive? we could see a big positive move and maybe we end up above 41.17 early on in the week. This is what we were pointing out before last week even started. We were saying we were looking for an upward move in the dollar while the stock market headed higher at the same time. And that's exactly what we got at the end of the week. That's exactly what we got at the beginning of the week. We never broke down to lower levels, which would be regular. If, if the SPY is going up, then the dollar should be down here. The dollar should be down here where the SPY is at right now. It is not. It is bouncing back. So there is a lot of fear coming in from the insiders for some reason, because that is a massive, massive bar. You're about to curl up this daily MACD. And if that goes positive, you might just see that major top this week. Okay, you might. You need all of these things to confirm. The indicators are telling you it, it has the possibility to if you get another day of selling from the insiders just pay attention um, as we look into volatility this here is very interesting the daily was not able to roll over yet and we actually got this little double bottom okay so as we go into these shorter time frames i just want you to notice on the two hour you do have this like kind of divergence on the on the macd not necessarily on the r side at the same time but i want you to look at the 30 minute the 30 minute is telling you good divergence triple divergence and saying good divergence triple divergence on the r side and macd at the same time right at the level we were expecting we said 12 12 12 12 is always what we say when it comes to volatility we said 12 12 what do we do we get a little double bottom there and now if this turns up and goes positive you can start to see those bigger time frames go positive and that will mean a big move in volatility is coming if those bigger time frames can roll up so the overall takeaway here is we could see some major volatility coming in right away this week and we see how over the weekend actually last time gme and amc saw their big pops it was over a weekend before a monday open so we could be seeing something really really bad come out come monday we still want to make sure our signals are confirming that we do not just want to think something we want our signals to tell us what to do we just push the buttons thank you so much for watching today i really do appreciate it be very very careful out there good luck to everyone on their trading this week if you need to learn a little bit before the week starts a hundred dollars for the whole month of june you can get that down in the description below for the course it'll teach you a lot of the stuff that we're talking about in depth and very clearly because on youtube we have to be a little vague we have to, you know but in a course i can literally tell you exactly how it is. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you live tomorrow morning. Peace out.